In this video, we're going to discuss how to construct different time series models incorporating not only linear time trends, but also nonlinear time trends such as quadratic or exponential. And importantly, we're also going to discuss how we can compare the results or the fit of these different models um, to be able to decide what's our best model to represent the uh, time trend that we're encountering in our data and any possible seasonal factors. Now, uh, the data set that we're going to be working with is a data set that shows us retail sales over monthly periods from 1955 all the way to uh, January 1996. So we've got nine, 493 observations of monthly retail sales and uh, the first thing we're going to do is just open this in Radiant. So for now I'm just going to copy this data and open it in Radiant. So uh, when we start Radiant uh, we're going to load data of type clipboard and I'm just going to paste the data in here. And uh, before we visualize it the first thing we may want to do is we may want to check again that the data, the variables are uh, designated correctly and date here again a string character, it's a text variable and we may want to change that to uh, as a date. So month, date and year seems to be the format, the correct format. Uh, the preview is showing us that that's exactly what we want to do. So we'll store this and we now have that date variable correctly formatted in case we want to use it. For instance, for an initial visualization of uh, the time trend. So we can go into visualize and ask for a line plot of sales over time. And what we can see is that sales definitely um, increase over time. So there's a quite clear positive trend. Um, it doesn't seem to be exactly linear and importantly also we don't see that big of any seasonal adjustments or we don't see many um, sort of we don't see many seasonal changes and so generally what we're going to try and do is to just replicate or model this increasing um, trend of sales over time, not worrying about any seasonal factors in this case. And so the first thing we may do is then simply create a linear time trend to check how well that can capture this pattern for us. And uh, for that we're going to create a linear time trend variable. So transform and create a time variable which is going to take the values of 1 to 493 and that's going to allow us to check for a linear increase um, that we've seen in the data of sales. So we're going to store this variable in our data set and at that point we can already run our first simple time series model uh, using sales as our dependent uh, response variable and using time as our explanatory to capture this uh, time trend. We can ask for confidence intervals and everything else we'll leave as is for now. We'll estimate our model and as we saw and would have predicted um, the coefficient for our time trend variable is positive. So we've got an increasing trend over time. Sales are increasing over time. And um, our adjusted R square is, is very high. Um, we don't have anything this far to compare it with. Um, but we'll just remember this for now. It's about 89% of explained uh, variance in terms of the increase or movements of sales. Now um, we 
may want to look at this prediction and we can do this uh, both by clicking on the plot tab up here which allows us to select the dashboard regression plots which gives us uh, as we've seen before a number of plots that allow us to analyze uh, model fit as well as um, what we want to do right now is just simply look at how how, how do our uh, predicted um, sales compare to the actual sales. And as we see, it's an increasing linear trend that we're predicting using our linear time trend variable. And of course, uh, the actual values do not seem to perform so linearly. It seems to be uh, rather a nonlinear pattern. And if we look at the residuals, clearly there's an inverse, or actually just a U-shape in this case, which shows us that we're not capturing the systematic um, pattern in sales, which really hints towards uh, maybe a quadratic term that we can try in order to better uh, capture uh, this increase in sales over time. And another way we could look at this um, is simply to, uh, let me go back here to our model, to save our predicted values. So we're going to predict, and we're going to predict for the same data that we just used to estimate our model. And we'll predict um, sales. And we can say this is predict linear. And we'll save this. And we can now go into the Visualize tab. And in the Visualize tab, we can actually look at how do sales, the actual sales, compare to what we predict over time. So we select both of these for a line plot. It's going to give us these two plots separately. So we'll check combine y variables in one plot. And we can use a date, or in this case, we, the time, which is the same uh, variable as our x. And we see that we predicted a linear uh, increase of sales over time. And clearly, uh, and this is exactly what we saw in the residuals plot, the actual data does not seem to fit that perfectly. And there are systematic ways in which we basically overestimate and between here and here, and we underestimate for low and high uh, values of time. So the early periods and the last periods, we underestimate systematically, whereas sort of in the middle period, we overestimate. So a way we can try and rectify this is by including a non a square term in our uh, time series model. And we do this by going back into transform and simply saying we would like to transform our time variable and the function we would like to use is a squared term. So we can create a squared time variable and store this. And this now allows us to use this squared term in our model together with the uh, simple time term in order to capture this nonlinear uh, trend that we've seen in the actual values. So let's go back into the regression tab. And um, we're going to now include both time as well as the square time variable to estimate our model. And once we do this, well, we see that square time is indeed a statistically significant predictor and it is positive. So um, we now have a significantly higher adjusted R squared value compared to the approximate 89% from before. And um, if we look at the plot to look at the residuals, this is still from what we saw from before. Now, there are still some patterns which don't look exactly random as we would like, but it does look a lot better compared to before. And 
um, we can compare these two values indeed, these two models, I'm sorry, by saving the predicted values of, of our uh, current model as well. So we'll just, for the current data, predict using both time and time squared. And we'll predict this as predict uh, squared uh, variable. And now we can go back and actually visually look at both at the same time to see how well do we fit our model to the actual sales over time. So we're just going to add to this plot that's still here from before our um, predict squared, um, and sorry, that shouldn't have been on the x, that should have been on the y, predict squared, uh, and we'll combine this in one plot prediction line. So the blue one is what we just built and we can see compared to the simple linear model that it clearly fits the data much better. So uh, hands down it's outperforming our linear model it seems um, as we would have predicted from the increase in R square that we just saw and um, so clearly an improvement over the linear model. A last thing or another model however that we could try if we expect that there's an exponential growth of sales over time is um, a log model in which case we take the log of sales and uh, that allows us to capture an exponential trend um, over time and we'll compare that as our third candidate for uh, explaining this growth in sales over time. And the first thing we need to do is simply we need to create this uh, log of sales as a new variable. So we'll transform our sales variable and this time we will use the natural log. And it's going to be saved as a new variable called sales log. Now we can go back to our model tab and as our third model we're going to predict not sales but the log of sales to, to capture an exponential growth pattern and we're simply going to use time as our predictor and we'll estimate this model and again we have a positive coefficient for time and equally a very high adjusted R square. And when we look at the plots, this looks a little bit worse, possibly in terms of the residual plots compared to the previous one, but it, but it also seems much better than the simple linear model. Now, at this point, uh, we may want to actually conclude on one of these three as being the best model. The problem is that if we simply look at the adjusted R squares and we had about a 89% uh, adjusted R squared of the linear model and 99% adjusted R squared of the squared model and then now for the log we have almost the same um, level of adjusted R squared but the log model really has a different dependent variable. It's not expressed in the same units. We're not predicting uh, retail or sales. We're actually predicting the log of sales. And the other two models are predicting sales expressed in its actual unit. So when we compare different models, uh, usually what we'll work with is the root mean squared error, which uh, we can ask for down here and uh, the problem is, uh, similar to the R square now, is that the root mean squared error is expressed in the actual units, which in this case is the log of sales. So how do we compare the root mean squared error, which is going to be our measure of how well do our predicted values compare to the actual values, so how well does our model fit to the actual data? Um, for these three models. How do we do this? Well, there's a trick uh, to overcome 
the difference in units for our uh, log as well as the two simple models from before, uh, which is to standardize all of our variables. So if we standardize our variables, we're going to get the coefficient expressed in standard units and we're also, as we'll just re-estimate this, get our RMSE expressed in standard units because the RMSE is simply given to us in the units that we're working with that, of the dependent variable. And so um, we now can compare this RMSE of 0 0.056 to the one of our other two models. So let's just rerun these other two to compare it and we're going to make sure that we save this to the report as usual so that we can look at them all next to each other. So we've got our log model saved here. I'm going to go back and then use uh, simply sales as dependent variable and the previous model we used had time and time squared as explanatory variable. Again I'm going to keep the standardized option on and ask for the RMSE. And it turns out that in this case it's even lower at 0.026 and expressed in standard units. And I'm going to save this to the report. And then lastly, I'm going to go back and simply estimate sales with our linear time trend uh, variable. And in this case, actually our RMSC went up significantly as we would have expected and saw before because it's clearly the worst fit in terms of a model. And so um, in this case, we'll say if this, our RMSC is in standard units 0 0.16. And if we look at them all together, just to compare these standardized RMSCs, Clearly, our quadratic model was the one that performed best. As its standardized RMSE was about 0 0.26, 0 0.026, so 0 0.056 was the log model, 0 0.026 was our quadratic model, which also had the best um, residuals in terms of not looking like we're missing something as clearly as in the case here of the log model as well as absolutely in case of the linear model. And the linear model had by far the highest uh, standardized RMSE. So um, this allows us to compare them and uh, we would go with the quadratic model. And this concludes our tutorial video on how to estimate different kinds of time trends from linear to nonlinear, quadratic and exponential and how to compare them to pick our best performing model.